There's a racial animosity in America that's like a plague of sores festering on the skin of America. Sores that will not be healed by ointment or tincture or even a balm of sweet sage. It is a plague that will not go away and causes eyes in boardrooms of corporate America to lower when it's merely alluded to causes eyes to lower in the halls of Congress. This hostility is directed at the African American by everybody, including the African American himself. Fact, 11 teens per day are killed by violence. Children killing children. Nationwide, one out of four teens killed are killed by guns. By shooting where innocent bystanders died just as easily as the target. Last year, in Philadelphia, 81% of the children killed that were 16 years of age and under were African American. They say you're not allowed to bring no weapons or stuff, but you know, what about our protection? What's going to happen to us? What we going to do? If somebody try to come to us and do something else, what we going to do? Across the country, 91% of all blacks murdered are murdered by blacks. There is no end in sight. Many people try to figure out why this vastly disproportionate ills that black people suffer. Why? Some say, oh, it's lack of money. It, it, it's a disproportionate poverty. It's disproportionate joblessness. It's disproportionate dysfunctional families. We say it's none of these things. It's not lack of economic base, it's not lack of money, it's not lack of any of these things. We say that these things are the mere advents, are the mere manifestations, are the mere symptoms of a deeper, single problem, one problem. And that problem, we give it the name of the problem, the problem. Now, the problem is that the entire society, inclusive of African Americans, has been programmed by the media to believe that African Americans' ancestors came from and evolved in an area in West Africa of a abysmal ignorance, of subhumanness, of bestiality, of lack of any light of culture or education. Now, this problem divides itself into two impact areas. The first impact area we call psychic trauma. The second impact area we call absence of the territorial imperative. Now, psychic trauma comes from without, comes from the dominant group. Psychic trauma manifests itself in attacks of aggression, attacks on our genetic worth. Books are written. Humiliation abounds low teacher expectancy in the school so that 90% of our children can't learn. This manifests itself in what we call psychic trauma, coming from without. The stripping of the territorial imperative from us is that second impact stream. What did this do? It gives the feeling that we came from nothing, that we came from jungle. You see, the poison that comes out of the television and the motion pictures degrading us, degrading our foreparents, the Tarzan movies which degrade our African foreparents and our African brothers and sisters is a poison that envelops you every day. 
You can't smell it. Just like you can't smell carbon monoxide. And that poison that pours out of the television, out of the motion pictures, out of the non-minstrel shows which we look at every night, <clears throat> our children do, is like that poison which depresses our ability to do math, depresses our ability to achieve in business, depresses our ability to make the kind of marks that your intelligence would allow you to make. I'm going to apologize as a member of the older set for apologizing to you this morning for allowing the TV and the movies and the schools to continue to poison your minds. We kill each other because of that. Out of 10,600 deaths last year of blacks killing blacks, 6,000 of them were committed by young men between 15 and 24 for nothing, over nothing. He looked at me wrong. We hate each other because of the poison that's enveloped our minds from the motion pictures and from the TV and from the school textbooks. Now, the territorial imperative is an absolute. It's an absolute necessity for man to relate positively to the land of his ancestry. This will give him three things. Give him stimulation, gives him security, and above all, gives him race esteem. Now, race esteem is the foundation for self-esteem. Without race esteem, you cannot have self-esteem. Race esteem is the flower, and self-esteem is the mere fragrance of that flower. Race esteem gives you the, and gives all African Americans, this pure foundation concerning our ancestry. It wipes away this lack of intrinsic value that white America, has put on us. Let's make them believe that they're less than men, that they're really not human. Huh. They said, let's tell everybody that. Let's spread the word. We have control of the newspapers and the magazines. We have control of all of the uh, media of com communication. Let's make white people believe that. And then they won't establish abolitionist societies. They say, you know, that's a good idea. And in 1805, they began publishing in the newspapers and in the magazines this lie that our fathers and mothers came from a jungle. They did a good job. And they held on to that job until Tarzan came out in the movies in order to further reinforce that lie. And so our children grew up believing that lie. You are beautiful people. We have been programmed by the media, non-deliberately in my opinion, non-deliberately lately, that is in the last 40, 50 years, to despise our looks through a psychological law called paired associate learning. By pairing our looks with degradation, with crime, lines of criminals, graffitied walls, torn down houses, other evidences of powerlessness and degradation, nobody wants to be powerless. So everybody rejects those looks which are paired with that powerlessness. On the other hand, if a certain type of looks with, with uh, uh, poorly pigmented skin and uh, unevolved hair and pinched features are always paired with beautiful surroundings, dressed in beautiful clothing, speaking beautiful language, solving great intellectual problems, doing great moral deeds, 
evidencing all of the facets of power, then everybody wants to identify with power and want to identify by association with those looks.